The Drum Show is proudly brought to you by DW Drums, Promark Drumsticks, Minel Cymbals and Evans 360 Drumheads. How are you? My name's Chris Whitland. And I'm bringing you lots of little tips, education and stuff. Courtesy of DW Drums, Minel Cymbals, Promark Sticks and Evans Drumheads. This one's all about the hi-hat. Now, if I take the hi-hat out and don't play at all... I'm doing a single stroke roll here, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I did then was sort of slow down, break it up a little bit, and then if I'm... if you come into this clip right now, you know, just click on YouTube or come into, you know, your brother's room and you sort of, hey, Macca, have a listen to this. And you walk into the room and say, what's up, Simo? <laughs> Sorry about me. But um, if you're doing things like that, hey, Robbo! <laughs> For people who aren't living in, in Australia, that's our lingo. Okay, beautiful. Uh, yeah. So if I just play... That just sounds like I'm tuning up, right? But if I just start with the groove, one, three, four, one, two, three, two feel, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or if you like, one and two and three and four and one. Some of the things that you hear, not that I'm playing anything in particular, but um, stuff that Frank Zappa used to make his whole musical language from, you know, I was doing fives. See, one, two, three, four, five. So, say hippopotamus, five syllable word, hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, 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 it up, edit it, doing any, anything you want. Now, when I just say turn my Promark SD7 sticks around, multi-stick, one end is a mallet, the other end is a round tip wood. This gets me into other stuff that I'm quite into with drums, in the sense that I'm starting to play a little bit more tribal kind of there's the five there's a little seven Gina Lola Brigida if you want to does anyone know the beautiful Italian movie actress from the 50s 60s she's still kicking 
beautiful woman and after her she re oh, I don't know if she re properly retired from the from Hollywood and all that but Gina Lola Brigida is also a very famous uh, photographer and um, she's also renowned for that but if you say her name G na la la bri g da seven okay so what happens is if you say her name Gina la oh, I'll do it in one on one drum Gina la la bri g da Gina la la bri g da Gina la la bri g da I'm using the sticking right left right left right left left so it matches nicely with the five right left right left left okay hippopotamus hippopotamus Gina la la bri g da hippopotamus hippopotamus Gina la bri when you put that in, I'm going off on a tangent, I'll come back to the hi-hat in a minute. Um, what goes on? You split it up around the drums, that'll be another lesson. Kind of stuff. This is more sort of classical percussion side of things. So uh, when you're talking about, um, um, there's there's a chap on YouTube I like very much, Casey Kangalossi. I hope I'm saying his name the right way. But he's brilliant. Go check him out. He's all over YouTube. Um, terrific classical percussionist, all that sort of stuff. Writing his own original classical percussion things. Quite innovative as well. But if I go back onto the hi hat and just do a two feel, right? Say do that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. that going. Take out the bass drum. I was just putting in um, fives and sevens then um, against what started out just an offbeat hi-hat on two and four, right? So you can get grounding from it and that's the thing about, you know, the secret power of the hi-hat. you can get these really out there kind of figures but you're still staying inside because the hi-hat is giving you focus you see there's there's things that you can do with that even with say um, well if you're getting I'm, I'm sort of going down the track I'm a bit scatterbrained with this today because I've been singing Johnny Cash maybe that's the reason why I've talked about classical percussion and Johnny Cash in the same clip how does that happen uh, <laughs> but um, now does anyone remember Sandy Nelson um, I'm old enough now to um, remember when I first started playing drums and Dad would take me to a picnic with some of his mates, you know, all that sort of stuff. Hey, can he play like Sandy Nelson? You know, that kind of thing. And Sandy Nelson ha was this incre had this incredible groove. You might remember Let There Be Drums and stuff. And he would um, essentially just groove out on a Bo Diddley beat, really, yeah. Take it a step further. And he was great um, for in the late 50s, 60s, you know, he was just a sensation. There's a beautiful rhythm. 
um, beautiful rhythmic groove player in, in that kind of time. You know, days of Mizzaloo, Dick Dale and the Deltones and surf music, Bombora, the Atlantics, the Shads, the shad, you know, Shadows. Um, Bill Bennett. Oh, the Bruce Bennett. Sorry, pardon me. And um, you get that. But then when you're starting to play that, keep the hi-hat going. Go to the snare drum. Now, this snare drum I'm playing now is the newest addition to my little drumming family. It's a DW stainless steel collectors. 14 by 6.5. starting to get into a New Orleans style playing, right? It's almost on the point of being sloppy, but that's part of the charm, really. right hand between um, this Byzance Minel 20 inch sand ride between that and um, my first floor tom or if you like one two three four tom four and keeping the left hand on my snare. What I'm going to do also is going to move it between um, go down to my now this is a symbol that took my breath away when I first heard it um, and it's, um, I don't know, there's something about this symbol. It's a 22-inch um, sand crash ride um, designed by Benny Greb, okay, with three rivets in it. It's a 22-inch crash. Who's ever heard of that? Well, here it is. Have a listen to that. And I'll move that between, when I get to it, i move it between that and my second floor tom. In other words, tom five. Go back to single stroke roll, let me build it up. Uh, single stroke roll. I have my snare drum tuned down a little bit. And in actual fact, this particular DW Collector's stainless steel snare 14 by 6.5 has a three-way toggle switch down here. Okay, on the snares. Okay, so 
So I can even get it lower. I mean, as far as the snare, having it um, snares loose. Snares uh, normal or medium. Nose a bit tighter. I haven't turned anything. It's on the other side. And then tight, which is a little bit more. When I was coming up um, in the 70s, um, that was the typical tight snare drum of Billy Cobham or a young Bill Bruford with Yes and then King Crimson. I'm going to take it all the way down to loose for this. Is that. So, here we go. Single strokes. Two feel with the feet. Based on a 3 2 clave. Right hand to the sand ride and the floor top. Reintroduce the 3 2 clave. Put in a few flam extras. My floor tom is now coming in at the same time as the hi hat. Move. Watch the hi hat. Solo. So that's, um, I did a few things there, um, but I hope you got something out of everything that I talked about. 3-2 um, clave, turning into a New Orleans kind of a feel, even talking about polymeter, or, you know, polymeters and stuff, fives and sevens, Gina Lola Brigida, Hippopotamus, all of these different things. Go back over the tape, find the bit, write it down if you can. Happy to help. And all of this is brought to you um, by DW Drums. Okay. Um, uh, Minel cymbals, Promark sticks, and Evans drum heads. Okay, there you go. My name is Chris Quinlan, and um, this is the kind of things that I've loved doing since 1995 with my television show here in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Melbourne Musos, The Drum Show. Hope you get something out of it. See you next time.